And welcome back to Inside IUE Sports as we continue with our basketball season preview show. I'm Kyle Wright from the IUE East Athletic Department in off the bench to interview our men's basketball coaching staff, uh, head coach Mark Hester and the youngest assistant coach in the River States Conference, uh, Bryson Hester. So, Coaches Hester, thank you for, for joining us. Welcome. All right, so we're going to run through the, the men's basketball roster, a pretty good-sized roster for this year. We'll just go uh, player by player in numerical order and meet the team. So uh, numerically, that means first up, uh, JT Counts, a junior transfer uh, from Indiana, spent some time uh, at uh, other states in junior college. Yeah, JT's, uh, you know, JT's got a lot of potential, um, but you know, as we know, potential doesn't mean a lot if you don't develop it. So we're, we're hoping that he will work into developing it. He's a great shooter. Um, you know, he's a good kid. Um, just got to just got to learn how to work at the four-year level and learn how to communicate, which that's that's always a big adjustment for everybody. But uh, you know, hopefully he'll get it because he could really he could really help us if he could, uh, you know, with the way he shoots and stretches the floor and you know with his size and stuff like that could could help us a lot. Okay. Next up numerically, uh, number one, uh, Julian Short, back for his senior year. Uh, communicator, you know, uh, one thing, you know, people look at you, they don't see that, uh, you know, all, what a good guy he is. Uh, you know, he recently, along with Jalen McKay, did a five-on-five -five, uh, basketball tournament at a local park to benefit Boys and Girls Club. You know, give him a shout out for that, uh, just because he, you know, what a, a tremendous thing to do, you know, in your senior year to to help out the community. And I thought that was that was really great. But uh, you know, Julian's a great communicator and and, and a good guy that, uh, you know, will hopefully. Hopefully, at his age, we'll have a, a very productive senior year. And Bryson, I understand Ju's a good friend of yours. Uh, what do you want to tell us about your friend Julian? Um, he he's a great person, and he normally likes to likes to try to flick me around. <laughs> that sounds like you have a good time together, then. Yep. All right. Uh, next up, number two, first of the freshmen, we're going to talk about Bryce Long from a very strong program at Scott County High School in Kentucky. Yeah, Bryce is a winner. I mean, there's nothing else you can you can say about him. I mean, I think um, you know he he's just one of those guys that you look at the you know you look at the stat sheet and the one thing that's always going to be consistent by his name is the win loss record. You know, it's always um, it, he he just does whatever it takes. You know, he he can he'll dive on the floor. He'll take charges. He'll rebound his position probably as well as anybody I've ever seen. Um, and and he. He's getting to be a better shooter, um, he, you know. But he makes big shots. He's going to make the big one. You know, he just does a lot of, um, you know, a lot of little things that help you win. And it's showed because he's been to, you know, what, three state state championship games or state tournament games and two straight cha state championship games in Kentucky, which, as we know, is not easy. Um, you know, and uh, uh, was a four-year starter there and, and and for a program that played a national schedule. So I mean, he's he's um, you know we're excited about what you know his future holds. Another freshman I know you're excited about number th Hiller, number three Isaiah Moore uh, out of Indianapolis. Yeah, Isaiah is um, Isaiah is a, a, a tremendously talented shooter. I mean, he's he's I don't, don't want to. It reminds me a little of myself and his body size and stuff and his ability to shoot it. Uh, he is much uh, uh, much more polished as far as a uh, uh, you know as a scorer. Uh, how he goes about it and does it, and he's starting to learn. He's a much, much better ball handler and passer than I ever was. That's for sure. Um, you know, but I can relate to him on, you know, some of the limitations on things with the size and, and whatnot. But uh, he is, he is learning at a rapid rate, and not only the basketball side, he's learning the, um, you know, the adulting side, the college side, and that's, uh, that's a good thing to see watching him. Uh, learn work ethic and learn, uh, you know, maturity and stuff like that as he as he's growing up. It's it's really cool. Bryson, is your daddy a good shooter and passer? Yeah. So that's good news for Isaiah you, then. You so. can say I'm a terrible yep. passer. I, I was a good shooter. I'm a terrible passer. I was. And what I think. I just didn't pass it because I could shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up, at uh, number four, uh, uh, first I believe international player on the men's basketball roster, uh, Jehu Lafayette. What he brings. Oh, Jay Hugh. He is uh, he is from Grenada originally. Uh, plays on their senior national team. Um, you know, he's uh, extremely high motor, long, athletic, has all the skills. Um, learning the game is his biggest challenge, and I think he's, but he's super smart and he wants to. So he he works at it. Um, I think he's going to get better and better as the year goes on. He's made tremendous strides since this summer. Um, you know, and uh, we look forward to what he's going to be able to, to, to do on the court. But uh, off the court, I mean, he's a funny, funny guy. 
Uh, you know, we, sometimes we'll ask him to say words just because he's got that, you know, cool island accent, you know, and and uh, it just makes it really enjoyable to be around him. So we're 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 gonna have a fun year with him. Uh, next up, uh, number five, Donald Lee, averaged five points a game in three games last year before uh, injury knocked him out. So repeating his freshman year from a basketball sense, uh, talk about what Donald can bring. Donald can bring some athleticism and energy. Um, you know, he is, uh, when he wants to be, uh, when I say want to be, I, th I think it's more the mental side of getting over his injury uh, because I think the, the physical side of it, uh, he, he's over it. Uh, but uh, he, he just has a high motor. He's very strong, extremely strong, um, tenacious defender. Um, you know, he can do a lot, of, a lot of things athletically that most people can only dream about. Uh, but he hasn't quite gotten back there yet, so I'm hoping that it still, uh, it's going to still come as the, as the year goes on, and and hopefully he's another one that just gets better and better as he get his leg is stronger and stronger and and uh, gets back into the the swing of things. And so, uh, you know, it's with Donald, it's going to be a process, but I think it's gonna it's going to be an upward process. We hope. Uh, senior All-American back, uh, Bishop Smith, averaged 18 points a game last year. Uh, not afraid to take and, more importantly, make the big shot. Uh, just chat about Bishop going into his senior year. Um, you know, Bishop's, Bishop is a you know, tremendous player, obviously. He's got to he's gotta morph into a tremendous leader. You know, we're still looking for that uh, Jacoby Claypool-esque type of leadership skill from from people and uh, Bishop's the closest one I think from a, a standpoint of not afraid to say the truth to people and, and uh, uh, you know we all know Bishop doesn't stop talking from the time he wakes up till he goes to sleep and uh, he's just got to learn to channel that energy into positive leadership uh, for the group and uh, uh, as far as is we will go as far as his leadership takes us now it's not as a from a playing standpoint that's from a uh, from the, the mental uh, the mental and, and verbal Leadership, both by example and and uh, and, and talking, um, you know. But that's there's a lot on his shoulders. But that's just the reality. Is that's that's what his job's going to be. And so uh, hopefully he'll he'll embrace it and and do great with it. Uh, next up, number twelve, another senior, averaged nine points a game last year and started every game when he was healthy. Uh, Keating Rombach. Um, you know, Keating is is extremely valuable to us because things just seem to go smoother when he's out there. Um, you know, we need Keating to step up and rebound. We need Keating to step up and be more vocal and, and take a, more of a leadership role. Uh, but uh, uh, as far as his production or whatnot, it's, it's, it's rebounding. I mean, I'd like him to be obviously a more consistent shooter, which I would like for everybody to be. Uh, but um, but uh, he's got to, um, he's really got to focus on rebounding the ball this year at, at a high rate. There's no more Aaron Thomas. There's no more standing around watching somebody else that you know is going to go get it. Uh, he's got to do a good job with that. But uh, uh, all of the other small things, uh, you know, Keating will do. And if he can, you know, he's another one that battled injury all year last year. It's never quite gotten back to where it could be. Uh, so I hope that uh, if he stays healthy, that he'll be a huge contributor and have a, go out a great, you know, having a great senior year. Uh, another uh, transfer from the Indianapolis area with some uh, junior college experience, Jaleel Gilliam. Uh, yeah, Jaleel could bring some some uh, depth on the on the uh, defensive end. Uh, he's a uh, he's a tremendously hard worker. We've probably never had somebody spend as much time in the gym as he does uh, working on the shot and his handles and things like that. Um, you know, he, he, if he has time to shoot it, he's going to knock it down. Um, uh, but uh, he's he's another one that has got to relearn our system and relearn things. Uh, you know, and talking is. You know, it's, it, our job is make, is helping kids grow up and mature into leaders and to, to better people, more and employable people. Jaleel's a great guy. He he he's one of those that hasn't embraced the world yet. He's he's very uh, you know he's very um, lives in a bubble, and we've got to get him uh, out to be a better basketball player. He's got to start being more extroverted, and especially in our system. So uh, once he does that, I think he'll he'll be able to contribute some some positive things for us. Another one of many indie products, uh, Kyle Finch, uh, junior on the roster, second year in the program. Uh, chat about Kyle. You know, Kyle, we're hoping just gets healthy. Uh, he's got a lower leg uh, issue that he's had since the second semester of last year that just has not is not healing right. And uh, when he is available, I mean, he could bring a lot of different things. Uh, you know, he he's extremely explosive, maybe one of the most explosive players we've ever had. Uh, but he can uh, uh, he can shoot it a little bit. 
Uh, he can rebound, block shots. Uh, a lot of good things Kyle can do. He's just got to get healthy in order for us to be able to do it and, and then embrace, uh, embrace following, um, uh, following teammates that want to lead him. And uh, I think that uh, once he does that, he'll, he'll be productive and, and have a good year. The guy who can really light it up when he gets it going, uh, Brady Smith, uh, going into what is his senior year with the program. Yeah, Brady, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, improved so much. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, on Brady as far as his improvement as a basketball player. Uh, he's also improved a little bit as a leader, and that's that's been impressive. He's had a few outbursts uh, this year at people when he's he's needed to, and, you know, guys have joked that, you know, Brady's a very um, uh, spiritual, religious guy, and, you know, they've, they've said he might have to go back to church a couple times that week for a couple of his, uh, his outbursts, which were great because he doesn't normally do it. And when he is willing to step up and put himself out there like that, that's a, that's a great sign. And, uh, you know, if he's, he, he's got to understand uh, his value to us is in him being on the floor uh, because he will space it, not just in the shots that he takes. And uh, he's starting to understand that a lot more. You know, he may get fewer shots, but he's getting, he, he's still buying a space with his presence. And, uh, you know, he's, he's became, become a, a really good uh, defender on the ball. Um, he, you know, he's, he's still working on the, the team aspect of, you know, defensively. But, uh, you know, he's made so many strides that, you know, he could, he could end up having a really, really productive senior year. A uh, guy who really came on strong the second half of last year, I thought uh, Garrett Sill cut out of Connorsville, actually led the nation in assist to turnover ratio as a freshman. I, I would give anything to have a f whole team of Garrett. Um, you know, not only is he, is he a good player, and, and I think he finally started to show what he was capable of once he got comfortable last year. He is, he is a great, great kid to, to coach. I mean, you, don't have, you have to tell him things once. Um, he is going to give you max effort literally on every single thing he does. It doesn't matter if you tell him to go get a glass of water, he's going to go do it as, as hard as he can and as best he can. And, and um, you know, that's a product of, you know, uh, playing in the Connersville system, you know, where he came from and Coach Brown. I mean, he's, he's um, you know, taught those guys well. And, uh, you know, Garrett, if Garrett would lead at the level that he plays at, I think things would, would go, go tremendous for us because he, uh, has the potential uh, not only to be a great player, but he also has the potential to be a great leader because anytime you've got somebody that does things as, as well and as hard as he does um, and, and is, as unselfish as he is, it's a, it's a, great, uh, uh, it's a great attribute to have in, in a leader. And so I think that, that he's just got to grow up a little bit and, and get more comfortable talking just like he, he became more comfortable with his shot last year. You know, I think I saw uh, in conference he shot you know, 38% or whatever it was last year, just in conference, but he only 30, 31 for the year uh, because he just, second half, he got it going. And I think that hopefully he'll start out that way this year. And in the couple minutes we got left, a couple newcomers. Uh, first up, number 24, a freshman out of uh, Indy Cardinal Ritter, Nate Soltis. You know, we're expecting big things out of Nate. Um, you know, he uh, is way better than, we knew he was good. He was way, he's way better than what we thought. Uh, he's another one that he wants to do everything right. Uh, he makes an effort to do things right. And uh, he is, uh, uh, you know, when he does, when he finally does, it clicks and he can do everything without thinking as much. And he's willing to uh, take risks. And by risks, I mean pressure the ball a little harder than what he thinks he can. He's so much more athletic and, and, and gifted than what he thinks he is. And uh, when he gets that, that's when he'll become special. Uh, you know, right now he's still thinking more than doing and talk and doesn't talk because he's thinking where he's got to start thinking out loud and that'll, that'll really help him. And last but not least, uh, number 32, Tanner McFall, uh, junior college transfer originally from Columbus, Indiana. Tanner's gonna, gonna be big for us, uh, you know, just because he's one of those guys that is willing to do whatever it takes to, to win, um, you know, and whatever we ask of him, he's willing to do it, whether it means him uh, being the person that does it or, um, you know, playing a, playing a smaller role uh, from a, uh, you know, a production aspect, but, guarding somebody that needs to be shut down or, or, or wanting to rebound, wanting to dive on the floor, wanting to take charges, all those types of things Tanner, Tanner does. And so, I mean, he's going to see a lot of minutes, uh, and I don't think his, his stats are going to show how valuable he is to us. And uh, that's going to be a, you know, he could play a huge role because he, he's versatile and, and things like that. So we're, we're really looking forward to the year with Tanner. Bryce, I'm going to ask you the last question, okay? So just uh, tell all of our fans out there watching on TV just what do they need to know about uh, your dad's team this year? 
what should they be most excited about? They have a really great team, is one thing. Two, the the sportsmanship is really great, which is what which is what um which is what is putting our team together and making such a great year. All right, so there you have it. So that's two really good reasons to come see the Red Wolves this year. It all gets underway November 1st and November 2nd. IUE starts the season at Indiana Wesleyan's tournament, a short drive from Richmond. The first home game is November 5th against Huntington at 7 p.m. That's a Tuesday in the second half of a doubleheader. We're so grateful you joined us this week on Inside IUE Sports. I'm Kyle Wright from the IUE East Athletic Department, and we'll see you next time.